Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. My name is Ruth Watson and I am an integrative counsellor in training and here at my channel I share tips and tools which may help you with your mental health and well-being. So this week is a short video and it's just really to say that we sometimes don't feel like we're good enough. We all know that feeling of, oh, I'm just not good enough, that voice in our head that says that to us. And I want to take time in this video to say something that may sound a little wacky or out of sync with what you're used to hearing online, um, which can be very much positivity led. And this isn't unpositive to say that sometimes we just aren't good enough. And bear with me while I explain what I mean by this. So sometimes we just aren't good enough. And it can be really liberating just to accept that fact and to kind of dig a bit deeper into what it actually means to be good enough and the expectations that we are putting on ourselves around being good enough. So this has really hit home for me recently because as somebody that's now nearly full term pregnancy and has gone through what has been a interesting time to be pregnant, and really recognizing that a lot of the time I've had a lot of negative self-talk about the fact that I'm not dealing well enough with what's going on and I've not been a good enough mum already and this baby hasn't even arrived into the world. But the idea that we put so much pressure and expectation on ourselves to kind of live up to our to-do lists and to be productive and to manage a lot of things all on our own and one of the things that I really want to say is that sometimes we aren't good enough because we are not meant to be doing the things that we are doing on our own so that is liberating in itself just to recognize that god I am trying to do so much and is it really natural that I should be doing all of this on my own? So if we look at that phrase, which is often used particularly by birth educators and for parenting, which is, it takes a village. And I don't think that just applies to being a parent. I think it can take a village to do a lot of things. So it can take a village of people to run a business or run a workplace and make all of those cogs tick. It can take a village to raise a child and to have a home and grow a family and manage work-life balance. It can take a village to kind of be okay in ourselves and to feel fulfilled and to feel calm and feel less anxious. We need our friends, we need our family, we need our support network to be able to help us to manage our mental health and well-being, as well as whether you're working with professionals like counsellors or therapists. So it's just to acknowledge that sometimes when we fall down and we drop the balls and we smash the plates, that the reason why that can sometimes happen is because we are not physically or mentally meant to be carrying the load that we are carrying are just on our shoulders. It is meant to be spread out among many backpacks, among many different people. Um, one of the ways that I think is really important to manage this idea of not being good enough and how we can kind of lean into a more realistic perspective of what's achievable and what's healthy for us is to really look at our limits and our threshold. So we all have different limits and thresholds depending on our life situation. So if you're nearly full term pregnant like me, your threshold is going to be lower probably than what it was before you were pregnant. You're not able to run around and do as many things, you get more tired. So that's just one example, but it may be your age, your mental health, your physical health, that just changes over time. So that threshold shifts around, but we've all got a limit of what we can take. Um, it's up to us to get to know that limit and to, to sense into what, what that is for us and to accept it, not try and live up to somebody else's limit. And between that limit 
and normal life, we don't want to always be at our limit. Obviously, sometimes that's going to have to happen, but ideally, on a day-to-day level, we want to have a buffer between our daily lives and our limit. So, like a little bit like a savings rainy day jar. So, when the proverbial shit does hit the fan, we are not going to tip over our limit automatically. We are going to have some savings in the bank that are going to help us. So ways that we can make sure that that is there is to really look critically and deeply at what we are filling our days with and our to-do list with. So if you have a to-do list that is as long as your arm, what can you do? What can you do to cut yourself some slack? And slacking off can often be seen as a negative But in this particular instance, I want you to see slacking off for some of the time as a positive. So um, do you need to be doing as many work tasks as you do? Can you condense things? Can you make sure that you leave work on time so you're able to cook yourself a healthy meal at home and check in with your partner or have a decent hour to go to bed? So sometimes things can come off our to-do list like do we really really need to be running around to all of these social situations and parties and gatherings and or can we say no to some of them can we just say do you know what no I need a day a week where I just chill out at home and that's my time and that's okay to give yourself that so that's one way that we can create a buffer for ourselves but I totally recognize that when I become a mum, I'm sure this is going to become even more apparent that sometimes that to-do list is just big and we can't take stuff off it. So when that happens, we need to look at our coping strategies of what can we be doing between these little tasks to carve out little nuggets of time and to prioritise what we're doing. So you might want to look at We all have 24 hours a day. Life's very equitable in that way. Beyonce has 24 hours a day. You have 24 hours a day. I have 24 hours a day. So what are we using that time for? And how do we feel about how we're using some of that time? So I know, for example, that I can waste an hour on my phone on social media. I feel pretty rubbish after it because I might have missed out on something that... I wanted to do or I might end up having beans on toast instead of a nice meal that I could have cooked because I've wasted time going down the rabbit hole on Instagram. So that's one for me personally to work on and just to look at what we could do that would make us feel better in that time. So would we quite like to sometimes just have a nap? I've been doing a lot more napping recently, that's been nice, giving myself permission to do that. Um, would we like to just go for a walk in nature even if it's just for like 20 minutes 10 minutes even Um, would we like time to just throw on some songs in the kitchen and just have a dance (coughs) bless me (laughs) Um, so it's really helpful to just think about those little micro things that we can do in the day to help us to just cope better and to slack off a little bit and to allow ourselves to have that buffer so we can manage better and we don't lapse into kind of like um, really bad spirals of anxiety or mental health issues or physical health issues, which tend to happen in my experience when we get pushed over that limit. So I hope that has been helpful in some way. I don't know if any of you guys sometimes feel like you aren't good enough and me saying actually sometimes you aren't good enough and neither am I has been helpful at all because I know it's a bit of a a counterculture message to to put across in a video but I hope it's been helpful and I am very pregnant now and I'm doing my best to keep up with YouTube when I'm inspired but I am cutting myself some slack so if I disappear for a little bit I'm in nap land baby land um, and I will be back in touch very soon with another video. All right, take care everyone. Bye.